Okay, so this question looks uh, super formalistic, but let me just uh, uh, sketch out what the information given in the question is saying. It's saying that a helicopter with some mass, so we have some object with some mass, has a position given by, oh, so they are giving us um, actual position as a function of time. So position as a function of time, they have given us the x component, so some x as a function of time. And they use i hat, j hat, k hat. I prefer uh, x hat um, because that way it's easier for me to remember. Oh, that's x component. And they give us y position as a function of time. And they give us the z position as a function of time. And what are they asking us? find the net force on the helicopter at some time. Oh, so this is actually a lot simpler than many of the uh, standard strategy questions that you might be doing because they've basically given us all the information we need really um, for the description of the net force. What you need to remember is that net force is related to acceleration by Newton's second law, mass times acceleration possibly as a function of time. And acceleration as a function of time, as a vector quantity, is given by derivative over velocity as a function of time. So, and velocity <laughs> as a vector quantity is given by derivative of the position as a function of time. So uh, let's do it this way. I'm going to enter these um, three function of time into sage math. And let me just take the double derivative in sage math. And uh, if necessary, we'll plug in value of t. Uh, there might be situations where we don't need it. And we'll, we'll say, let's take it from there. So we are saying our x as a function of time is, um, wait, am I doing this right? <laughs> let me look up a documentation. Um, to help me. So I'm going to be taking derivative later. So let's make sure that um, I know the example. So, so okay, I think we, I can define it that way. So define function that way. So I'll have to first uh, define the variable time because that's the thing I'll be using. Oh, right. This is how you declare variable. Um, so x as a function of time is uh, 0 0.02, the coefficient times t to the third power. y as a function of time is 2.2 .2 times t. And z as a function of time, I have to remember to include that minus sign. z as a function of time is minus 0 0.060 times t squared. All right, I think we are good. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a double derivative of x um, with respect to t. I think this is one of the ways you can take the der double derivative. So yeah, that gives us a value. Oh, we need to plug in a value of t. So let's uh, say uh, substitute in uh, t is equal to 3.1. Let's hope that works. Okay, yeah, that works. So we have that. And I am going to multiply this number by the mass that we are given. 2.1 times 10 to the power of 4. So ignoring the left-hand side, which looks off. So it should be 7812 Newton for the x component of the force. Okay, let's keep going for... Uh, this exact thing, except we are doing it for y, double derivative, and then substitute it in time if necessary, and then multiply by mass. Oh, zero. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess double derivative that would be zero. Okay, let's do one more time for g component. Minus 2520. Okay, feels right. Minus 25, 20. Oh, and I'm just noticing one thing that they are looking for kilonewtons, not newtons. So I need to divide this by thousand to express things in kilonewtons, not newtons. So I need to put a dot here so that it's in the right uh, prefix of newtons. 
So submit, and that's it. So it's, uh, uh, you know, when you are looking at it with all these vector notations, it looks intimidating. But once you figure out what it is they are giving and what they're asking for, it's actually simpler because all you have to do is take derivatives. And um, even if you had to do it by hand, the polynomial derivatives hopefully are easy enough. <laughs> it doesn't trick you. Okay, got one dash ten. I think that's a similar question. Let me just do it so that next time I see it, I can say, "Oh, I've done it." Look at this thing I have done. So, okay, this question says some. Uh, let me just doodle what, as I'm reading the question so that I know what it is they're asking. So we have something that's, I guess, moving at some speed because it's saying uh, decelerates from twenty. Okay, so it's moving at some 12.5 meter per second, and then to, it's still moving sometime later, but to um, 7.5 meter per second, and from here to here, that happens in amount of time of 2.3 seconds. Okay, to join another dolphin in play, well, average force was exerted to slow the first dolphin if it was moving horizontally. Oh, <laughs> I see. So this is, uh, again, um, asking you to simply recall Newton's second law, which relates the net force to mass times acceleration. And as you read these pieces of information given, I hope uh, it clicks somewhere that um, from your kinematics knowledge that uh, if you connect this to, um, I guess, the definition of average velocity. So definition of average velocity is change in speed, change in velocity divided by duration of time. So from my final velocity and initial velocity, I can get change in velocity, V final minus V initial, divided by I'm given delta T directly. So this will give me acceleration. I just need to multiply by mass M, or the mass that's given. Um, so that gives me the net force that must be on the dolphin for it to have the acceleration that we have seen. So let me plug in the numbers and do it. Um, so V by and all is 7.5. Oh, um, so in this question, it's uh, ambiguous to me if they are looking for a signed quantity, as in minus signs are meaningful, or an unsigned quantity, as in they are look, looking for magnitude. Since they don't say the word magnitude, let me put it in, in, with the signs. So my final velocity minus 12.5 initial velocity, so I'll get a negative answer there. Let me let that be. Divided by the time, 2.3 seconds, and then the whole thing multiplied by the mass of 36 kilograms. So I get minus 78.3. Let's try it with a sign. And if it says that's wrong, then I will, yeah, I was going to uh, try the positive version of it. Um, it, it is, I, I do feel it's a little ambiguous, but uh, so the minus sign here is meaningful in that it indicates that the dolphin is being accelerated in the opposite direction from the direction it's moving. 